Rare Gem Productions proudly presents Entrepreneurially Thinking. Entrepreneurially Thinking is a presentation of BioSTL and CET, the Center for Emerging Technologies, changing the way you view new ventures and activating your entrepreneurial mindset, empowering you to create new pathways for business success in the St. Louis marketplace and beyond. Here's your hosts, Cheryl and Christy. Now let's get thinking entrepreneurially. Welcome back to the Entrepreneurially Thinking Podcast. I'm Christy Maxfield. <laughs> and I'm Dr. Cheryl watkins Moore with BioSTL and leading the inclusion initiative here for the region. Hey, lady. How are you? I am well. It is. It's good to be back in the studio. It is. I, I like when we have our rhythm, you know, it's yeah. just something to look forward to. Yep. And I love seeing you. So, yes. uh, you know. It's we, always got its Even perks. though it's like we, it's well, not some like weeks we, we spend a lot of time together. Yeah. Other <laughs> weeks, it's like, where are you? Right. I miss you. <laughs> but we're back, and we're really excited to continue to bring you yes. first-rate guests, interviews, and episodes. And we know we're making an impact because you guys are listening. We just want to thank our founding sponsors, CET and BioSTL, for their continued support. So you can check out more about them and about us on our website, yeah. as well as going to visit them on theirs. And that way. You you can stay connected to all the great things going on in the ecosystem here in St. Louis, but also, you know, reach out and connect with other people yeah. doing great things. We want to be where you guys are. And, you know, I sometimes lose count of how many of you guys are out there, but we are close to 30,000 plays and downloads. Wow. Yep. And this year, one of our big goals is to increase our listenership. So yes. we really need you to help us spread the word mm -hmm. uh, to use the hashtags EthinkSTL, Ethink Podcast, Stay Listening. Give mm -hmm. a shout out to your favorite guests, share, give us your comments after you've listened, tell us what you think. Mm -hmm. All those things help us reach more people. We reach more people. We're able to spread right. great stories all and give over. Us, give us folks that you want us to talk to. So, you know, visit the website. Yeah. Make some recommendations. There you you can find us on iTunes, Spreaker, Facebook, LinkedIn, wherever you find your favorite podcast. Yep. So what are we doing today, girl? So as you know, we start with the historical tidbit. But yep. um, so in early 2015, the St. Louis region was really from the killing of Michael Brown, shot dead by a Ferguson police officer. The St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, like other local media outlets, covered the story. A few local editors, however, decided as a whole that the news organization needed to do more. Mm -hmm. This thought gave birth to a project that would examine race in St. Louis. That's great. So we have a friend that's stopping by here um, so today. Camille Stanley is with us today to discuss the topics close to the heart of so many St. Louisans and to tell us why she traded a job at Florida's biggest newspaper for a top job at Missouri's biggest public radio station. So in light of it being 17 below zero <laughs> and <laughs> are you saying that we really cold, have to figure out why she moved here from oh Florida? Oh my God. We're going to be talking to her very shortly <laughs> because I want to know why in the world she left this sunny Florida to come here. I, I suspect some really compelling reasons. I think so. So as we always say, stay listening. Bio STL is a proud founding sponsor of the Entrepreneurially Thinking Podcast. We want you to know about all the great things they are up to, including the Bio STL STEM Entrepreneur Inclusion Initiative and Fundamentals Program for early stage would-be entrepreneurs in the life sciences in St. Louis. You can learn more about all of Bio STL's programs by visiting biostl.org. And for your renewed and continuing support, Bio STL, we say thank you. My name is Camille Stanley. I am a podcaster and producer of the We Live Here podcast for St. Louis Public Radio and PRX. Entrepreneurially thinking means to me pivoting, growing, and pushing through the future. Joining us today is Camille Stanley co-host of the award-winning We Live Here podcast. Camille and other members of her team use the podcast, radio features, web stories, social media. When I was in public television, we would call that the beyond the broadcast ah, outlets okay. uh, for us to explore in depth the systemic racism that impacts people in our region and consequently learn from that and expand yeah. our thinking there. Uh, before moving to St. Louis in 2015, Camille was a beat reporter for the Tampa Bay Times, where she investigated racial disparities in policing and government. She also, in her spare time, because, you know, we got so much of that, 
uh, storytelling. She has a brunch club. Uh, oh my you know, God. she's a busy woman. And interestingly enough, from my perspective, when I asked her to be on the show, mm-hmm. she was like, I'm not sure I'm an entrepreneur. So <laughs> and we uh, just we're going to explore that, that right. topic as well. But Camille, thank you so much for being yes. with us today. Yes. Thank you guys for, um, for inviting me. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, so that's the interesting thing is like when we looked at you and we're like, oh my God, like she has her, the podcast and she's also does this brunch club and she's got these other things. Mm-hmm. And like, we always talk about the entrepreneurial mindset, not yes. just the act of doing entrepreneurship. Mm-hmm. And so in our world, it was a no brainer. We're like, yeah, Camille exemplifies the entrepreneurial mindset. Absolutely. Let's get her on here. But you had some trepidation. Yeah. And in my mind, this is totally like imposter. <laughs> what? How did they get my email? <laughs> you put it out there, girls. That social media uh, thing. I googled. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally sitting here. Like, I, I, I'm still not sure why you guys think of me as an entrepreneur oh my because God. I, I think that I'm, I'm, I'm heading down that path, mm-hmm. but I'm not there yet. So, so what do you think keeps you from being one at this point? Mm-hmm. Um, when do you think one day you'll wake up and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to use that word to talk about who I am today? Probably when I publicly launch my company. OK, oh, <laughs> so there's something. So there's something in the works. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. See? Oh, I'm not an entrepreneur. <laughs> so we're getting her. We're please. just in the quiet yes. phase. There's there what go. we would call the quiet there you phase. Go. She yes. is. She's gearing up. So, Camille, we always I always because she always tells me you always like to start at the beginning. Mm-hmm. I do. Well, now that we've established that she's got all sorts of cool things under wraps. Let's yes. go back to the beginning. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, because you're not a St. Louisan, right? No, I'm not a St. Louisan, and I'm an and, and she's and not Florida, a Floridian and either. I'm not a Floridian right. either. I'm an adopted <laughs> Floridian, even though yes. um, Florida I would consider is my home. Ah. Um, Michigan is where I was born and raised, and Michigan I think of as a place that once was my home. Mm. Where, where part of Michigan? I grew up in Port Huron, okay, which is about 45 minutes east of Detroit, and lived all over the state. So have family. Like my brother's in Detroit, my aunt and uncle are in Ann Arbor. I went to school in the middle of Michigan, lived for a while in Grand Rapids and in Jackson, Michigan. So I'm very familiar with Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um, but and the I, coldness of Michigan. Right. <laughs> Which is why I left as soon as I could. So you went to undergrad in Michigan or mm-hmm. and where'd you go? Central Michigan. Okay. Okay. And then you went from there. From there, I... Well, in between my semesters in college, I traveled because I was getting internships at different Ah, newspapers. So Um, you always knew you wanted to go into journalism? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Um, Yep. I always knew that I was, I mean, I've been uh, reading since I was three, writing since I was four, Mm. and just loved writing and always searched for outlets for that. And so, which led me, when you're a kid, usually when you're in elementary school, high school, that's going to be like the school newspaper that was going to be the outlet. Mm -hmm. So that was that also like poetry and I was always big into creative writing but I expressly did not want to go into any sort of career that had to do with writing so for mm. a, for a while I totally rejected that and was convinced that I was going to be a pediatric neurosurgeon <laughs> that's great okay which that's I great. probably could have probably should have um but <laughs> there's still time <laughs> but um <laughs> But you know what, what like sealed the deal for me? Like I was in this program when I was, I think I was in high school uh-huh. and my family, we raised all this money to send me to this program down in Atlanta for kids who thought they want to go into medicine. Mm. And it was super cool. I got to like scrub up and like watch surgeries mm-hmm. and things like that. It was really cool. It was a really cool program. Mm-hmm. But the second day I was there, I called my mom and I was like, I love this. I'm not going to be a doctor. <laughs> You know, and that's why those experiences are worth every penny. You know what she said? Because that was cheaper than medical school. You know what she said? She was like, I know. And I was like, whoa, like we like. Well, you mom know, can't I tell like, you. She spent the you, summer like baking cookies and mm-hmm. stuff and but all she other stuff. To but she you wanted that me experience. like I needed to come to That's that. That's right. I needed to come to that. She's right. a brilliant woman. So, you know, once that happened, I pivoted quickly and I was like, okay, well, I got to do something right. So um, did your parents always know that you, that journalism was something that spoke no, to you no. since you like to write? No, I think my, um, my mom was always like, you're going to do something. You're definitely going to leave this house. Um, <laughs> But, you know, but you can do something. Um, I was always I was a, I was a different child. So um, so they always knew I was going to do something. And, and, and it was very 
apparent that I was not going to stay in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Uh, But anyway, I pivoted and I was like, hey, well, I love uh, writing and um, I love being nosy. So, okay, (laughs) here's this thing, journalism, like, you know, and I I was writing a bunch and I had like, I ended up winning this contest for high school journalism students Mm. through the Detroit Free Press. Mm, Okay. And so... By that time, I was like a, an editor at the school newspaper and I won this contest, which allowed me to go down to the free press and talk to editors there. And they told me about scholarships and things like that for specific journalism scholarships. I wanted to go out of state for school, but we didn't have the money. So I knew I had to stay in state. Mm-hmm. So then I was looking for, OK, if I'm going to do this journalism thing, I want to go to the best program. And turns out in Michigan, there are two accredited journalism programs. Uh, one is at Michigan State and one is at Central Michigan. Oh. Well, my older sister had gone to Michigan State. Well, that eliminated um, that choice. I was like, totally I've been done. taking her hand-me-downs my entire life. <laughs> I will not be going to that school. I'm getting my own alma mater, damn so, it. <laughs> so I went to Central Michigan, uh-huh. had a great experience. Um yeah, and have been pretty focused since then on journalism. Wow. That's so awesome. As you were talking, I have a, students sometimes do an exercise uh, called a passion cube. Mm-hmm. And you prompt them through a series of questions and then physically make a cube out of how they've done their answers. Mm-hmm. And then tell them, hey, mm. like, look at the intersection of this part of the cube and that part of the cube might, might it be. And in my version of that now, I have nosy on one side <laughs> and writing on the other. Yeah. And at the intersection yes. of that is your career. Yes. Right. Yep. Like it doesn't have to be more elaborate than mm-hmm. that. It could be like, I'm really interested in other people's stories, a.k.a. Mm-hmm. I'm nosy. And I really like to write. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happens there? Like what what are the possibilities? Right. right. And so you are um, you're going to be my new passion cubist. Oh, like, that's exemplar. Awesome. oh, man. Interestingly, before I even, you know, made that pivot in high school and everything, my nickname, we were talking about nicknames yeah. before mm-hmm. we started this. My nickname speaks directly to me and like what I do. My nickname is Corn and Potatoes. Corn and Potatoes. That is my real nickname. Okay. Um, that's it's a long one. Usually yeah, nicknames are shorter. Yes. Like, right, Kiki. Corn. Or right, yours <laughs> yes. is Corn and Potatoes. Mine was Pumpkin, <laughs> but, you know. Mine was Peaches. Yeah, oh, so. We've got all the food oh, covered. I, I think that's appropriate. I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> that is so us. <laughs> okay. So my nickname is Corn and Potatoes, which was given to me by my older sister um, when I was maybe about five. Mm-hmm. And she started calling me Corn Corn and potatoes because it stands for ears and eyes. Uh, because I was super nosy. That always in somebody's business. Always in somebody's your, face. Now, how old is your sister? She's three years older than me. And she came up with corn and potatoes because mm-hmm. of that. Okay, I'm just eyes. saying she was reading at ears three and writing at four. This ears girl was putting up all sorts of <laughs> nicknames by the time ears she was two and, and a half. Ears wow. and eyes. And so I, you know, grew up and became a journalist, and it mm-hmm. fits. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, yeah. that fits. So yep. we, we also could just say. Take your nickname, yeah, and then go from there. Well, I don't know what peaches got know, because I'm, <laughs> pumpkin. I'm not sure that where that might got be either. something. That might be a different profession. Different. <laughs> Take that one to the stage. Oh peaches! Oh peaches! I'm, I'm just gonna have to call you that from now on. <laughs> wow! So tell us, awesome. how did you get down to Tampa? Oh gosh! Um, so one of my one of my internships um, was at the St. Pete Times. Mm -hmm. Um, And I wanted to go for that one because, again, when I went to the free press, I was an an apprentice, which is one step down from an intern. We didn't get paid as much, but we still got to do stuff, still got to do stories. My mentor that summer um, was an awesome journalist named Kelly Carter, who's an award-winning entertainment journalist. Mm. And she told me that summer, she said, you want to go to this paper. If you can get to this paper, get to that paper Mm. because it's a writer's paper. They care about diversity like you want to get there. So that was always a goal for me to get there. Mm -hmm. My summer, one of my summer internships was there. And that summer was awesome for me. And then after I got out of school, there was a it was a time in the industry when there was a lot of uh, pay freezes and job freezes Mm. and nobody was hiring. Um, And I was debating whether I wanted to what I was going to do, how I was going to pay my bills. And I had some discussions with people at the Washington Post where I'd also done a summer internship. Wow. And they were like, hey, you can come back for like a second summer, which may get you into the two year internship program, which may, you know, lead to something. Mm -hmm. No promises. Um, Florida was like, it's cold in Michigan. I was I was graduating (laughs) early. So I was graduating in December. And they were like, "Um, if you can be down here in three weeks, like we can guarantee you a year. 
And so I was like, okay, a year. Done. So I was like, I'm going to go to Florida for a year. going to have some fun on the beach. And then I'm going to go find my real job. Um, and that I ended up living there for seven, eight, nine wow. years straight. I, I own a house there. Like it's, you know, that then that became like my home. Wow. So Florida was very good to you. It was very good. Florida was where I blossomed. Oh, wow. And then, so in blossoming, I mean, we kind of jumped to the end of your career in Florida by talking about the, the reporting you were doing on racial disparities in there. Mm-hmm. I would assume that was an evolution for you. So what kind of beats did you It you definitely start was. I, uh, when I was in internships and when, um, I first got to Florida, I gravitated a lot toward the crime beat. And for a lot of young reporters, it's an early beat that they put you on. But a lot of people don't necessarily stick with it or want to. I was always very drawn to it. And so I liked doing that kind of stuff. I was at a writer's paper, but I didn't necessarily consider myself one of the star writers. I mean, when you're in a newsroom with Pulitzer Prize winners, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> you, you get humble real quick. But I mean, so, that's got to um, be, that's a no, great it's awesome. education, it's man. Awesome. You are around all these these great people who who are writing and writing on that type of level. Mm-hmm. Wow. And it was then, awesome. Yeah. So I decided like, I, I, I didn't know quite yet, like what avenue I wanted to go into, but I knew I just wanted to be a kick-ass reporter. Mm. And so that's where I kind of focused my efforts on. Um, and eventually, you know, I became a beat reporter, became um, w- one of the youngest and, mm. um, you know, a black woman covering a police department and mm-hmm. digging into racial disparities just because that's kind of where my interests mm-hmm. um, lie. And by the end of my tenure there, I was doing investigations and that was that was wow. super cool. For somebody uh, and f- speaking strictly for myself, I hate to write. So <laughs> I love hearing. <laughs> but you know what the secret is? Writers hate to write, too. It's a very painful experience. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Not, it's not a fun thing necessarily to be right to write. I'm looking oh. at Christy because I'm sure you know what I'm talking well, about. And you like the end product. Yeah, but getting there is Ugh. torture. No, yeah. my husband was a journalism major in college. So with our son, you know, I, when he has English papers, it's like, talk to your dad. If you have math and science, come talk to me. Yes. <laughs> Were we I to have a it. young human in our home, that would be completely opposite. <laughs> 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 but if Alan's not available and he's got word things, have him come to me. Oh, my God. Well, my son got a D on an English paper because he talked to me. He was like, I want to be <laughs> I will never uh, come to you. <laughs> so clearly, we are not going to put Cheryl on a beat, at least not on a written beat. <laughs> but I love the curiosity and the crime totally, scene stuff. Yeah. That is very yeah, that's cool. a whole nother genre it's conversation yeah. for you. Totally. I can tell. Oh, love it. Yeah. That, do- that dovetails with your Netflix binge watching very <laughs> yes. nicely. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So for you, what was the appeal of making the leap from the written word to the podcast? And is it that big of a leap, actually? Huge leap. Huge leap. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> okay. I thought maybe you know the the writing and the research Usually. and the prep before getting on the air would that's, be that's not sort of normal. That's not yeah. necessarily different, but um, switching mediums was a was a big thing. And um, now, why? How why? is that different? Why did I... Oh, because is it because you're writing where nobody hears the voice, and now you're the thing is, people ask me. Well, my friends who are still like at newspapers ask me now, like, oh, like. But you don't write. I'm like, no, nah, actually, I do write. You just don't read the word. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, because the, sh- the show that I do is is um, scripted, it's highly produced. So we, we are right. writing a lot, but but writing differently. Mm-hmm. I had to learn how to write in a completely different way. I had to learn how to write for the ear, not for the eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. I just I had we to should probably I had get to, a few I had of those to get lessons. used to. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm still not necessarily totally used to it. But like the idea of using my voice mm-hmm. as a as a tool yeah. is different. Mm-hmm. So much of my life as a journalist before was, I think about being a little bit more translucent where the stories and everything kind of were kind of flowing through me. But with podcasting, um, there's a different level of intimacy and authenticity that people mm-hmm. want and expect. Mm-hmm. So in a weird sort of way, um, I bring myself into it Mm -hmm. quite a bit more you're not as detached because when you're writing Mm -hmm. you're writing detached yes or when you're in the podcast as we know uh it's all you it's out yeah it's out there which is kind of cool yeah there's all sorts of different things and then interestingly enough like since i since i came to st louis and started doing this i personally have undergone a different sort of evolution where i think of myself differently than i did before Okay, mm. great. And so when we come back. Yes, that's a nice note to leave it on. We'll talk more about that. 
CET, the Center for Emerging Technologies, is a proud founding sponsor of this Entrepreneurially Thinking podcast. We want you to know all about the great things they are up to. Square One offers two training options. Square One Ignite, a four-week program created to help founders quickstart their business model validation process. Or Square One Bootcamp, an in-depth 10-week, 50-hour program that combines formal instruction with hands-on learning, networking, and mentoring. To learn more about Square One Bootcamp or Square One Ignite, visit CETSTL.com. And for your renewed and continuing support, CET, we say thank you. Hi, my name is Lynn Haynes, and I'm the Director of MBE Services with Mid-States MSDC. Entrepreneurially thinking to me means thinking outside of the box understanding that the sky is the limit and the only person that can get in your way is you. Camille, when we started our conversation, we talked about how you don't self-identify as an entrepreneur just yet, but you just alluded to that your identity has actually been changing a lot since you've moved to St. Louis in 2015 to do the We Live Here podcast. So what is that like? Um, so when I, you have to understand, when I was in Florida and my career up to that point had been working in a newspaper, working in a traditional media structure where I was, for all intents and purposes, small fish, part of a big machine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what I didn't really quite fully realize when I was moving here to St. Louis to do this job was it was the smallest place that I had ever worked. Mm. It was the whitest place that I had ever worked. It went from being at a, a major daily metro newspaper to um, a two-person team that put out a product that was kind of on the fringes of what the rest of the organization was doing. Yeah. Ah, And so mm -hmm. one thing that it taught me was um, we had to, we kind of fell into and heck and we, I say, I I work with a guy named Tim Lloyd. uh, So he's my podcast partner on the, we live here podcast, Mm -hmm. but we kind of fell into running what we did as a, as a startup within the newsroom. Mm -hmm. And she says she's not entrepreneurial. (laughs) That's okay. We don't, you don't have to use the E word. We know we we, we meet lots of people who don't use the E word. <laughs> so, so but yeah. she pivoted back way back. <laughs> exactly, way back. She used the p word. So <laughs> I'm just saying we made the right choice. She can there figure it out later. There okay, you go. okay, okay. <laughs> so, so this, you know, essentially, like we were kind of. Uh, set off to do something new and different mm-hmm. within yeah. this media they organization. They you to do something new and different and right. you had and to do I was that excited. And then what happens own. when you do something new and different, even in a large me- you know, a media organization, it's do something new and different and it's usually in the corner. Right. right. Now. So we were kind of by ourselves in the wilderness kind of figuring out this whole podcasting mm-hmm. thing. Turned out You know, I was doing a lot of different things that I hadn't had to do before as a reporter Mm -hmm. uh, for a newspaper. It was suddenly on me to, I mean, you had to do the thing to to do the journalism, but then also like do the marketing, do this, do that, you know, when, Mm -hmm. when write the grants, all this other, all these other (laughs) things, you know, that I was like, okay, I didn't, you know, I didn't realize I was doing all this shit. (laughs) (laughs) You know, but I also came. That was the fine print in the other duties as (laughs) a sign. Right, right. But I also, but I also came to like, really like it and enjoy it. And Uh um, I started started to think of myself as more than just a journalist. Mm-hmm. And then I started getting involved here in St. Louis with other things that gave me joy that had nothing to do with my job. Like what? I fell into running a storytelling organization. Mm-hmm. I started a brunch club for women of color. I, in a, in a different way that I felt that I could, when I was a newspaper reporter, got involved in the community as a citizen, very intentionally in a way that meant something to me. Um, and I felt that I could do that because I had a different relationship with audience. I was practicing a different type of journalism mm-hmm. where the expectations and the ethics and things, not that any of that was loosened, like that's mm-hmm. still my core, mm-hmm. but I just found a different way. Different path. Um, yeah, a different path to well, doing that. Well, you said it was about showing up differently. Mm-hmm. I, I sort of see the investigative reporter. This is about uncovering the facts, mm-hmm. right? And laying the facts out for folks to understand and put in context. And having listened to your podcast, you're really immersing yourself with in the context of the situation in this case, what does it mean to see racial disparities play out in St. Louis? Mm -hmm. And it would be very hard to be completely aloof from that, regardless of ethnicity, 
or race, because that requires you to have some really intimate conversations Mm -hmm. that aren't fact based in the traditional sense. Like we can't say this happened at noon on Tuesday in a parking lot. Yep. Right. It's that this is one's lived reality. Right. It's the qualitative instead of the quantitative. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, before all that, before where I had a um, perspective as a, a black woman writing newspaper stories about race and class for this or in city government or something Mm -hmm. it's completely different when i'm like podcast producer and host Mm -hmm. of a show that's specifically diving into having real talk Mm -hmm. about race and class and not bringing into it my identity as a black woman right that would seem preposterous but that does seem preposterous in in podcasting Mm -hmm. well on the flip side in other types of journalism for other types of medium for other types of media um that's exact i mean that's you are supposed to check it at the door goal of Mm -hmm. it Um, Mm -hmm. and then i you know i just started to figure out what what do i prefer Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. um so how is this new identity sitting with you it was hard at first because it was like um i had to totally break down my identity as a journalist and then rebuild it Mm -hmm. um also at a time that i moved to a city that had zero connection to Mm -hmm. I was not 19 had to learn how to like make new connections and figure out a new support circle so I knew I had an inkling when I moved here that it would take something out of me personally and professionally Mm -hmm. yep (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Eyes that, instinct wide open. Was right. <laughs> that instinct was right um now it's about degrees and intensity right. Right. so and right. now it's just like okay what, what, what do i do with this new mm-hmm. kind of iteration of myself but I'll, it also taught me a lot that i can that i can like figure things out yep. land in a new place mm-hmm. uh pivot you know land on my feet reinvent myself mm-hmm. I know that it's not going to be comfortable the whole time. And you moved here because of the job, right? I moved here because I have zero connection to St. Louis wow. outside of that. So Except you, for now. Now she's embedded yes. and in love. But, <laughs> but yeah. you moved here without having, it was more so you, you wanted this job. You had no connection to it, mm-hmm. but you built your own connection here. Mm-hmm. Just like like you're, you're saying. And the yep. We Live Here podcast yep. is phenomenal. Thank you. So it's interesting because you and I met Two years, three years ago, whatever. 2017, we know I can't count. Okay. Cheryl, Cheryl's dog years. <laughs> My dog years. And you did an interview yep. um, with me about our bioscience ecosystem. And out of that, I know you guys know Rachel Simon Lee, who uh, we've had on the podcast. That's how she connected was through that podcast. She actually sent me an email, did not think I would actually answer the email, but said, I heard you on this podcast and I'd like to sit down and talk to you about what she thought was a hobby that now she has a flourishing business. with. So you are impacting in our community in ways that you don't even know. So I'm glad that you are here. (laughs) Yes. No, I mean, we don't get feedback half the time. Yeah. We keep asking for it. Yeah. We keep asking. Asking for but it. you know what? I can I t- can I share something with you? Yeah. Okay. Sure. So we always love so tidbits. The, so the, <laughs> the, when when I was doing that podcast, that actual episode, producing that one, going out, interviewing you, interviewing some other people, that was the moment that I started to think about myself differently because I was going into these spaces. I came here, interviewed you. I was downtown at. Um, Mm T-Rex. So I was was interviewing all these entrepreneurs and stuff for this black women Mm -hmm. um, because that episode was specifically about black women entrepreneurs. Yes. And I was like, oh, my God, like these are my people. (laughs) You found your people. I was so hoping that's what you were going to say. But it was but it was at the time when I was questioning a lot and I was like this. I'm not doing the type of journalism that I was doing before. And what do I do with this? And like, I don't necessarily feel like I fit anymore, like in in the newsroom because I didn't any longer because I was doing all these different things. And I was like, wait, why am I drawn to that? So that that was the moment doing that episode. I was like, okay, welcome to the island of misfit (laughs) toys. We are your people. We don't care what you call us. Use whatever word you want. Exactly. But hey, the E word is big. Big people have things with the E right, word, right? We're gonna right. one of these days there'll be another word. Definitely for feel it. some type of way about that term. I'm <laughs> just saying, you're not the first one. Right. You're not, and you won't be the last. Right. Right. But uh, along those lines of being creative and taking inspiration taking from all leaps. sorts of and creating and falling into things, because mm-hmm. I heard you say yes, you fell I into. Mm-hmm. So you fell into doing the storytelling organization. What's that about? What stories are you telling? 
in there. It's yeah. called Second Tuesdays. Second Tuesdays. And so we mm. put on a, we, uh, my best friend here, mm -hmm. um, Shafante Ross and I, we put on a monthly storytelling event in St. Louis. So what um, does that mean? You guys tell stories or you're listening to stories? Sometimes we get on stage, but we foster storytelling mm. um, where people can, some of it's curated storytellers, some of it is open mic, um, at once a month on the second Tuesday in Old North at Herb Arts. Ah, um, we have food? Uh, <laughs> we don't have food, but we do have wine. That's good. <laughs> so bring your own food and she'll be, you don't have to be YOB. Yeah, you know, Christy and I, we yes. will go just just say, food or wine. I'm just saying peaches. We have to come <laughs> our, our tagline is um, vibes, wine, and stories. Oh, um, love so, it. Wine and stories. Um, so yeah, we we do that monthly event, and we just started doing storytelling workshops um, around town for groups and folks. So awesome! That's, that's a great that's way. Second Tuesday. I was going to say, if you're you're teaching people how to tell stories, mm -hmm. sometimes they can be very therapeutic for different folks who have had trauma or yep. things like that. That's really amazing. Yeah, one of the workshops we do is storytelling as self care. Mm -hmm. um, so that's. That's a cool, that a cool is very thing. Cool. Um, and that kind of fell into that um, <laughs> because uh, someone I knew here was doing it and um, they could no longer do it. And they came to me and asked me and I was like, I've never run a storytelling organization, mm. but I also care a lot about storytelling and yeah. especially about getting people who don't necessarily think of themselves as artists or yes. artistic um, to realize that they have a story and there's a way that they can tell it on stage. I was just thinking uh, African heritage. That was how history was passed passed down mm -hmm. through storytelling. Yep. So that's really impactful. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And then you did fall into something that had food involved. So you did a brunch. Yeah. I didn't fall into that. I did that. Okay. Oh. <laughs> that was intentional. That was intentional. That was intentional. So. And, and what drove that intention? <laughs> um, I like, I love brunch and I wanted to, uh, rebuild my, uh, rebuild my support system here. So that's a, a brunch club for um, specifically women of color. Mm -hmm. And uh, we just had a brunch a couple of days ago. And so that was me intentionally a few months after I moved here mm -hmm. deciding like I had a great support system in Florida. I want that um, differently and it's not going to come naturally because I'm not 19. I'm not going to school right, or right, right. crap or whatever that kind of fosters that yep. mm -hmm. artificially or genuinely, mm -hmm. however it is. And so one Saturday morning, I texted like the 10 cool women who I'd met in town. I was patient zero and we had brunch and um, that has stayed on. So it's all Very word of mouth. Cool. And so now, you know, I started with 10 women and now there's probably about 60 women on my list. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Where do you all brunch at? Around town. <laughs> different places. Cheryl wants on the no, list. There's, 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 so there's, we don't ever do, there's not all 60 at a time. Usually we end up oh, between probably different. about... Um, probably between like 12 and 20 because not everybody okay. can always make it. Right, yeah. right. Um, That's very cool. Though. Yeah, it's super and cool. And so you're building your own um, your own support. Yes. Yeah, very cool. And getting to meet, I'm sure, some very cool folks. Too. Yeah, there, this last one we had, we had a bunch of newbies. Probably about half the half the women there were, were new. Cool. cool. Yeah. And so what else is percolating for you? Because yeah. you did hint at the fact that you've got some other ideas in the hopper. Yeah. Um, so... You know, being a podcaster, um, being in media for this this uh, for as long as I have been, I think what's next for me is figuring out a way for me to do something on my own mm -hmm. that I own that I can support other mm -hmm. creators of color mm -hmm. and um, still in the creative realm. Still right? in the creative realm. Cool. So I'm working on a couple things. Good. Okay. Uh, well, we love ownership opportunities. Yes. And when we you find them very empowering. When it pops, we want to have you back. So oh, we yeah. know what Please. it is. And then yeah. I'll actually be like, I'm qualified to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll still be like, and I don't want you to call me that E word. And I'll be fine. <laughs> fine. Call yourself whatever you want. <laughs> so in your, I mean, you do a lot, a lot of different things. What do you do in, in the spare time when it's just, you by yourself hanging mm. out yoga cool um, i love yoga love music mm. uh what else so what's on your playlist oh gosh i've been <laughs> listening to a lot of um jazz mm. and i've been listening to a lot of stevie wonder lately and mm. um 
that kind of stuff. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. I like the different This morning genres. I was listening to uh, Nina Simone a lot. Um, <laughs> she was my morning, so... I love her. I saw her in concert years ago, and I mean, it was that is super amazing. cool, amazing. Yes, That's super cool. Yes, yes. Well, yeah. it sounds like you are very busy, mm-hmm. and for that, we really appreciate you making time to come out and talk with us. Yes, because thank it's you. Been really fun to get to know you, uh, get to know you more, get to know you better, um, and uh, to hear sort of how the arc of your story is evolving. So, yes. thank you for making time to be with us. Thank you for having me. Yes, this has been very cool. Thank you. Changing the way you view new ventures, unlocking your creativity and innovation, igniting your thinking about entrepreneurship. It's Entrepreneurially Thinking. Get connected and discover more. Visit EntrepreneuriallyThinking.com to listen to all your favorite episodes and learn more about our guests, hosts, and sponsors. Feeling inspired? Be sure to share your thoughts, questions, and stories in the comments section. And don't forget to leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. The best way to show love is to share and subscribe. Let everybody know that you're entrepreneurially thinking.